Hello friends, this video on NEAT Human Health and Diseases is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 18. Which one of the following is not correctly matched? Glossina palpalis, sleeping sickness, Culex pipiens, fil filariasis, Aedes aegypti, yellow fever, Anophilus culicifacis, leishmaniasis. So let us look at each of the options. Now yellow fever. So yellow fever is a disease which is caused by virus, the Flavi virus. So Flavi virus is the pathogen which causes yellow fever. However, the carrier for this disease is the mosquito Aedes aegypti. That is the disease uh, gets spread from one person to another by bite of this mosquito Aedes aegypti. So this option, this is correctly matched. Uh, let's look at filariasis. So filariasis is caused by filarial worm. So filarial worm here is the causal organism and who is the carrier? So the carrier is Culex mosquito. So again it spreads by the bite of Culex mosquito. So this is also correctly matched. Now let's look at sleeping sickness. So sleeping sickness is again the is, it is caused by bite of this fly glossina palpalis in fact glossina palpalis is also known as cc fly so this is cc fly and by bite of this fly sleeping sickness gets communicated and it is this species that is this fly species it na is native to africa so this one also option a is also correctly matched so now we are left only with option b which shows that option D would be the correct option in this case because the question asks which is not correctly matched. So option D is not correctly matched. Why? What is Lish Lishmaniasis? So Lishmaniasis is also known as Dum Dum Fever and it spreads by the bite of certain types of sand flies and not mosquito. So it spreads the carrier for Lishmaniasis are sand flies. So, which specific sand fly? Phlebotomine. So, these are the carriers. So, mosquitoes are not the carriers because Anophilus is uh, refers to a particular species of mosquito. So, mosquitoes are not the carriers for Leishmaniasis. Instead, uh, they are spread by bite of certain types of sand flies like uh, phlebotomine. Question number 19. Carcinoma refers to malignant tumors of the colon, benign tumors of the connective tissue, malignant tumors of the connective tissue, malignant tumors of the skin or mucous membrane. So as we learned about the different types of cancer, we saw that carcinoma refers to the cancerous growth of cells on the epithelial membrane that is on the skin or the mucous membrane. So this is the correct option. Now for those who do not know the difference between benign and malignant so malignant means those group of cells which first grow slowly and later grows quickly and spread to other organs like blood as other organs plus blood and lymph so that is malignant so whenever there is a tumor in any part of the body so the doctor first that tries to diagnose whether it is a benign tumor or a malignant one because if it is a benign tumor that means its size would not increase beyond a certain limit moreover it will not be not get spread to other parts of the body but if it is a malignant one in that case the size of that tumor also will continue to increase and in fact it will it will increase quite fast and also it will start spreading to other parts of the body and that is what we call as cancer so in in what is carcinoma it is malignant tumors of skin or mucous membrane question number 20 which one of the following conditions though harmful in itself is also a potential savior from a mosquito born infectious diseases so okay so here the correct option would be sickle cell anemia because the carriers of this disease the carriers of sickle cell anemia they are very less prone to malaria so malaria is a mosquito born infectious disease so that's why this is the correct option now why how does it prevent malaria to take place because the sickle shaped rbc's they do not allow the malarial parasite to survive so that is why malaria cannot uh, doesn't occur in carriers of sickle cell anemia 
Now, please remember that carriers of sickle cell anemia, they do not suffer from sickle cell anemia. They just carry uh, a gene of this disease. Question number 21. LSD is hallucinogenic, sedative, stimulant or tranquilizer. So, the correct option in this case is A, that is hallucinogenic. So, what, is, what does LSD do? LSD affects or damages the central nervous system. In fact, uh, an addict of LSD, because it is highly addictive also, so regular intake will cause addiction. And an LSD addict can be very easily recognized with his incoherence in drawing or writing. So LSD is a natural hallucinogen because it is obtained from the fruiting body of ergot, which is a parasite on rye plant. So LSD is hallucinogenic. So when you talk about the other option, sedative is basically sleep inducing. So those drugs which induce sleep. So sedatives are sleep inducing. Stimulants are those which uh, increases the physiological activities or increases the nervous activities in the body. So it kind of energizes you. So that's stimulant. Tranquilizer, they are anxiety reducing or tension reducing drugs so L the full form of lsd is lysergic acid diethylamide and it is obtained from the fruiting body of ergot a parasite on rye plant question number 22 hybridoma cells are product of spore formation in bacteria, hybrid cells resulting from myeloma cells, nervous cells of frog, only cells having oncogenes. So here the correct option would be hybrid cells resulting from myeloma cells. So what are myeloma cells? So these are cancer cells which are capable of continuous growth but lost the ability to produce antibodies that means they have the ability to grow but they cannot produce antibodies so such cells are called myeloma cells so that means they can grow continuously but they cannot produce antibodies Now, what are these hybridoma cells? Now, some antibody producing splin cells fuse with the myeloma cells to form hybrid cells. So, that means these myeloma cells plus the some of the antibody producing splin cells, they combine together or they fuse together to form the hybrid cells. And these hybrid cells proliferate into clones which are called hybridomas. So hybridomas are screened to produce desired antibodies. Right? So that's the speciality of hybridomas. And these type of antibodies are known as monoclonal antibodies. Why they are called monoclonal antibodies? Because they come from a single clone of identical cells. Because these identical hybrid cells, they all proliferate into clones which are hybridoma. So hybridomas are all clones. They are all identical. And from those hybridomas, desired antibodies are produced. So that's why they are called monoclonal antibodies. Because they are obtained from cloned hybridomas. Right. So here the answer would be hybridoma cells are hybrid cells resulting from myeloma cells. That means myeloma cells and the antibody producing splin cells, they fuse together to form the hybrid cells. And these hybrid cells then proliferate into clones and these clones are called hybridoma. Question number 23. Koch postulates are not applicable to cholera, leprosy. TB diphtheria. Now, if before we answer this question, let us first understand what are Koch's postulate. So, Robert Koch discovered uh, the bacteria for tuberculosis. He also discovered the bacteria for cholera. So, now we all know that tuberculosis is caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis. We also know that cholera is caused by the bacterium Vibrio cholera. 
but these two bacteria were first discovered by this scientist named robert koch so koch postulates are somewhat like this so koch postulates state that pathogen must be regularly found in the body of the organism suffering from the disease so that means if an organism is suffering from cholera then the pathogen which is vibrio cholerae should be regularly found in the body of that organism so that was the first postulate of koch the next postulate was pathogen must be isolated to grow in pure culture in artificial medium so if you want to grow the pathogen in an artificial medium then the pathogen must be isolated only then you will be able to grow it in artificial medium the third postulate was same disease must occur when cultured pathogens are injected into healthy animals so an animal which is not suffering from any disease but if you inject these artificially cultured pathogens into that organism then the same disease must occur and finally the fourth postulate was the same pathogen must be recovered from the injected animals now again if you try to find out the pathogen which is present in the injected animals you should be able to get the same pathogen so these were the koch's postulate so basically in short we can say that it told that if an organism is suffering from a particular disease then the pathogen should always be found in the body of that organism if we take that pathogen out and artificially grow it in artificial medium and again inject it into some other healthy animal then that animal also should get the same disease again if we take the pathogen out from that animal and then we should be able to get the same pathogen from the injected animals so in short these were the koch's postulate however these postulates were not applicable to viral diseases they were only applicable for bacterial diseases why they were not applicable to viral diseases so they were not applicable to viral diseases because only bacteria can be grown in culture medium so because viruses can't be right but in this case all the options that we see in this particular question all of them are examples of bacterial disease now there is one exception of bacterial disease for which koch's postulate is not applicable and that is leprosy so leprosy is the correct answer because uh, leprosy even though it is a bacterial disease but the bacteria causes leprosy which is mycobacterium leprae so this is mycobacterium leprae and this bacteria cannot be grown in culture medium and that is why koch's postulates are not applicable to leprosy thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you